What connection does Egypt's Suez Canal have with polar icebreakers that work in the Arctic and Antarctic? Because Russia has been developing a new trade route between Europe and Asia that runs through the Arctic Ocean and takes half as long to sail through from China to the UK as it does to sail through the Suez Canal. Attention has been focused on Russia after the massive 250,000-ton container ship ever given blocked the Suez Canal for six days in March 2021 halting global trade. This is not because Russia was involved in the incident. While the US government only has two icebreakers, Russia currently has over 55 and is constructing more to control this Arctic route. There is a real icebreaker gap, however, this is not what you think. Here are some reasons why the US government needs to secure the polar regions, how the most powerful icebreaker in the world was almost added to the US fleet, why the icebreaker gap exists but is not a major concern for the US, and why even if Americans had 10 10 polar icebreakers tomorrow, they would still have nowhere to go. I and the Bering Sea close to Alaska, the Russian Navy held its biggest war game exercise since the end of the Cold War in August 2020. The problem is that this drill was conducted inside the exclusive economic zone of the US. Russian warships were unexpectedly spotted by American commercial fishing vessels, who were then told to evacuate the area. You could argue that the US military wasn't there to protect their economic zone. But let's be honest icebreakers wouldn't have stopped the Russian fleet from ejecting the completing vessels in any way. Icebreakers are not prepared to take part in such military actions. Their primary goal is to dispel ice. The problem is that there is a simple explanation for the icebreaker gap. The Arctic Institute estimates that Russia has 2 million people living in the Arctic and roughly 15,000 kilometers of coastline. In contrast, there are just 68,000 people who reside in the Alaskan Arctic and 2,500 miles of Arctic shoreline. Furthermore, the Russian economy depends far more on natural gas and oil, even from the Arctic, than does the US economy, where extraction of natural gas and oil, even from non-Arctic sources, accounts for a relatively modest share of the GDP. Given that the Northern Sea route passes right through Russia, it is regarded as a crucial commerce route as well. The fact that Russia requires more icebreakers than the US may be explained by all of these factors, however, that does not imply that the United States can be served by only two icebreakers, particularly since one of them is nearly 50 years old. There is an issue facing the US Coast Guard as well. The US Coast Guard Cutter Polar Star, which had served for 30 years, came to an end in 2006, and she was put into reserve by the Coast Guard in Seattle. After two years, the Coast Guard could hardly rely on her sister ship Polar Sea much longer, as she was nearing the end of her useful life. That was before the Polar Sea's formidable engines had significant problems in 2010. Additional examination revealed that the pistons had soldered themselves inside the engine sleeves of five of the six major diesel engines, the US Coast Guard was in a dire situation, since both of its polar icebreakers were out of commission. That's because, in order for fuel and supply ships to reach McMurdo Station in Antarctica, where a range of scientific research is conducted, a massive icebreaker is needed annually to navigate and break through miles of ice. This yearly icebreaking project is part of Operation Deep Freeze. The Swedish icebreaker Odin was scheduled to assist with the yearly icebreaking mission in the event that both polar icebreakers were not present. However, the Swedish Maritime Administration declared that the country's strongest icebreaker was desperately needed in the Baltic Sea throughout the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere. Thus, the US federal government-funded National Science Foundation had to get in touch with an old friend, Russia. This is how the $11.5 million deal to help break the ice in 2012 went for the Russian-owned but Canadian-built icebreaker, Vladimir Ignatyuk. She had a contract to assist the following year as well. The cost of building a new heavy icebreaker at the time would have been close to $900 million, with a delivery schedule of 8 to 10 years. In order to prolong Polar Star's service life by roughly 10 years, the Coast Guard opted to spend $57 million, and Polar Star resumed operations in late 2013. However, the US need a long-term strategy that included acquiring fresh icebreakers. With the potential to build a third, Halter Marine was awarded the $1.9 billion contract in 2018 to produce America's two new polar security cutters. Delivery of the first vessel was originally scheduled for 2024, but due to design delays and bankruptcy, this was pushed back to around 2027. Yes, its parent corporation sold Halter Marine to Bollinger Shipyards in November 2022, after the company had been losing millions of dollars. Due to the postponement of the new Polar Cutter launch, the US Coast Guard was compelled to grant Polar Star an additional lengthy $76.2 million service life extension. The overhaul was spaced out over five years, 
because Polar Star is the only heavy polar icebreaker currently in service. This allowed Polar Star to fulfill its obligations for icebreaking operations throughout the winter and dock for maintenance and upgrades in the spring. For US Arctic icebreaking operations, Arctic Star is now the single point of failure. However, there is another icebreaker in use by the US Coast Guard that is much larger than Polar Star. Why then does she not fill in for Polar Star? US CGC Healy is classified as a medium icebreaker, while Polar Star is classified as a heavy icebreaker, despite the fact that Healy's displacement is only 16,000 tons, while Polar Star's displacement is 13,000 tons. Healy is a research icebreaker who encourages scientific research in polar locations, which explains why. Its bigger size is mainly to accommodate the onboard laboratories and scientific apparatus. It can continually break ice up to 4.5 feet thick at 3 knots, or it can back and slam through ice up to 10 feet thick. In contrast, the primary goals of Polar Star are to support other vessels replenish research stations and preserve access to them. It makes sense that it can constantly shatter through 6 feet of ice while moving forward and can back and push through ice up to 21 feet thick. For this reason, Healy is not considered a heavy icebreaker and Polar Star is, in any case, by October 2023. The US Coast Guard will have two choices for a heavy polar icebreaker. One is not great, while the other is horrible. The most potent privately owned icebreaker in the world hit the market when Royal Dutch Shell ceased its oil drilling operations in the Arctic. AVIC is a 360-foot offshore supply vessel that can handle anchors and is capable of handling ice. Its main functions are anchor laying and towing for drilling rigs. The owner of AVIC presented the ship to the US Coast Guard in 2015 as a potential icebreaker. Fu Off said the Coast Guard. The military shouldn't use this item. After a few years of difficulties and setbacks for the Coast Guard, including the previously stated bankruptcy, sweet desperation set in, to the point where funds for the purchase of the AVIC were actually included in the budget for the fiscal year 2023. Despite this, Congress took it out at the last minute. And I believe that's because there is an alternative. Returning the Polar Sea. Acquiring AVIC would need spending $150 million. However, restoring the Polar Sea which is a very effective icebreaker would set you back roughly $250 million. The problem is that AVIC won't be adequate for the position, unless much more money is invested to bring her up to US Coast Guard standards. AVIC is even less capable of breaking 3.3 feet of ice at 5 knots than Healy, the medium icebreaker. Despite the claim, it was never verified in ice trials, because to concerns about not meeting Coast Guard regulations. Furthermore, the AVIC lacks a helicopter hangar, but does have a helicopter pad. What makes Polar Sea the less obvious option? Then, as was previously noted Polar Sea experienced terrible engine problems to the point where, in 2017, she was forced to serve as a donor of components for Polar Star. The Polar Sea's engine need more than simply minor repairs. Before the replacement engine block can be installed, the entire engine block must be removed. This cannot be done easily, save from chopping open the side of the hull which is a significant task. However, it's not unfeasible. This procedure has actually already been carried out on a different US Coast Guard cutter, Healy. Healy experienced an unidentified electrical fire on August 18, 2020, which destroyed one of the two propulsion motors and shafts. She was forced to enter dry dock, where the ship's two hulls were removed from the outside and the inside. After that, a crane was used to carefully remove the section of the hull that had been cut out. The old propulsion motor could be removed by rolling it out on rails, thanks to this aperture. The replacement motor was subsequently installed after being brought in. This procedure was quite extensive and took roughly 30 days to finish. The hull section was repaired by welding or duct taping it back into place. It's important to remember that Polar Sea's engine manufacturer, Fairbanks Morse Defense, continues to produce and support that particular engine type, so they might produce more if necessary. In other words, it's not impossible to revive Polar Sea. The irony is that, whether the Coast Guard chooses to work with AVIC or Polar Sea. Those ships may have to wait in port due to a lack of competent officers to operate them, even if the Coast Guard were to get its order for three new polar security cutters right away. The US Coast Guard continues to struggle with hiring and retaining personnel. In 2020, the Coast Guard provided a $40,000 incentive to eligible candidates who agreed to take on executive officer, department head, and lieutenant commander roles. This serves to put things into perspective. How many people were interested, you may guess, none. In order to draw applications, the Coast Guard had to reduce the eligibility conditions. In summary Russia intends to fully control the Northern Sea Route, 
according to a 2020 hearing of the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. President Putin's administration has even threatened to sink foreign vessels without a Russian escort vessel or a Russian pilot on board. Icebreakers are an essential component of U.S. Arctic sovereignty and are required to reach Arctic regions. The quantity of icebreakers required by the U.S. to support its Arctic scientific endeavors and grant access to its exclusive economic zone, however, is independent of the quantity that other nations possess. However, in order to support the Coast Guard's law enforcement, search and rescue, disaster response, and scientific support tasks, Americans do need more icebreakers. Perhaps more crucially, though, are the people who will be operating those icebreakers. Simply said, I'm not sure which is harder to handle. What do you think? Simply write a comment for us. There's no need to introduce yourself.